And now it's time for development debates. We dig deeper into some of the questions shaping the future and present of China. Today, we'll see two Chinese experts debating if China's first quarter GDP is good enough for its economy. Last week, the Chinese government released its economic data for the first quarter of this year. According to the National Bureau of Statistics, China's GDP reached 12 trillion yuan, or about 1.9 trillion US dollars by the end of March this year. It saw a 7.4% increase compared to the same time last year. Although it is 0.1% lower than the government's annual target, it's still higher than the market prediction of a 7.3% increase. The 7.4% GDP growth rate was much lower than that of previous years. It would normally be in double digits. But market insiders are paying more attention to the country's economic restructuring, rather than the slowed down GDP figure. Last year, China's service industry, for the first time, surpasses secondary industry in GDP contribution. This trend continued during the first quarter of this year. According to government statistics, from January to March of this year, China's service industry has contributed to 49% of its GDP. This is 4.1% higher than the secondary industries. Financial commentator Yu Hai Rong wrote an article on Saishin.com expressing a positive point of view on GDP growth in the first quarter. Yu said that economic restructuring would slow down the development of China's manufacturing industry. However, Yu pointed out that developing China's service industry could create 30% more jobs than the secondary industry could. Data from the National Bureau of Statistics shows that during the first quarter of this year, China's migrant workers increased by 1.7% compared to the same time last year. You said that this gives government confidence not to implement a large-scale economic stimulus plan, like the one from 2008. Chinese Premier Li Keqiang said at the BOA Forum for Asia, quote, As long as China can provide a sufficient number of jobs, China's economy will be in a reasonable range. You said the country's declining economic data will allow the government to use a mini-economic stimulus plan to slow down the decline pace. You said that the government wants to use this to buy more time to accomplish the country's economic restructuring plan. You mentioned that once the process has been finished, China's economy will develop in a healthier way. However, another financial commentator, Wang Junfeng, wrote an article for Economic Daily that didn't share Yu's idea. Wang said that many experts believe that China's economic development can be sustained by domestic consumption. But consumption today is not strong enough to boost GDP in the near future. Zhang said that instead of developing the service industry, the manufacturing industry is still the most important thing for stabilizing China's economy. Zhang said that the government should focus on upgrading and renovating technology. This would improve the quality of production for Chinese manufacturers. Meanwhile, it also needs to weed out manufacturers who are big polluters and have low efficiency. Zhang also admitted that developing China's manufacturing industry might also require taking gigantic risk. Zhang cited government data showing that the sales to output ratio of China's manufacturers during the first quarter was 97.1%. It dropped by 0.1% compared to the same time last year. Zhang said that this indicates that China's manufacturing industry is under pressure from overcapacity. Zhang thinks that before developing the manufacturing industry, the government should carefully consider it. A lot of the influence and power China has accumulated on a global scale has come from the size of its economy. But by focusing on the size and not the quality, many economists and officials feared it would come crashing down. So with the slowing rate of growth, which is still very high by the way, many are assuming that the country is restructuring its economic model. It's obvious that there have been changes, but it still seems like housing, manufacturing, and state-owned enterprises make up most of it. 